So Bill C-10, the let's censor the internet or make it more Canadian friendly bill from the Liberals has been put on hold momentarily. We'll get back to that. Um, if this is your first introduction to Bill C-10, um, it, it's a bill to put the internet, YouTube, and other platforms under the control of the CRTC, which is what standard cable television is under control. There's a lot of convoluted rules about what uh, purports to be Canadian content. It, it, it's Needless to say, it's like, the bill allegedly is supposed to benefit me. I'm a Canadian content creator. I'm making this video in Canada. It's about a Canadian issue. I'm a Canadian, and my target audience is other Canadians right now. Um, do I think this is going to be the preferred, you know, thing in the in the Liberal Party's algorithm? I doubt. Uh, so, yeah, hypothetically, you know, what this bill is supposed to do is you type like, oh, I want an opinion from Ben Shapiro, da 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 But you're in Canada, so it says, did you mean Canadian fast-talking Jew, Daniel Boardman? Here you go, right? Allegedly, that's what it's supposed to do. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be pushed over the Daily Wire in your um, f subscription feed if that's where the algorithm pushes you because you're Canadian. Now, do I think that's going to really benefit me? No, I'm not, you know, high on crystal meth. Like, I, I, I can, and I, I understand, like, no, 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 the Liberal government bill is not going to benefit Daniel Boardman. Now, the, the NDP, who had full-on support of the bill yesterday, are now backing away from the bill because there's been enough pressure being put on by mainstream media members and other uh, people in Parliament. So the Conservatives were allowed to care about this because mainstream media cared about it first because there still is a few people in there with some integrity. Um, then they did some focus groups and said, are we allowed to actually stand up to the issues we purport to care about? Um, in this case, it says, yes, you are allowed to pretend to care about this. And then Aaron O'Toole's like, push the button. Eh, eh, eh. We're allowed to pretend to care. Some more people than Pierre Pauly ever are allowed to comment on this. Woo! So then the conservatives got in like, I'm allowed to pretend to be outraged here, even though I probably want to censor the internet because Aaron O'Toole loves to sue this fast talking Jew Daniel. Okay. Now, Aaron O'Toole suing me aside. Good job by the conservatives. Okay. Now, very fascinating language being used by the NDP here in why they've decided to put it on hold. Now, it's pending a charter review. This means who's going to review it um, is really a thing. So, you know, is it going to be like an impartial panel that, that all parties agree on? No, if the liberals get their own, if the liberals and NDP get their own panelists to review it and say, you know what, censoring people's freedom of speech doesn't actually affect freedom of speech. It makes better speech. Then they could say, well, there was a charter review, so it's everything's fine. Um, and then push forward. And it look, and it's very clear by the language in the NDP bill that they are very, very, very on board with Bill C-10. They just can't do it right now. So there's actually some fascinating irony in the language they're using. Um, I'll, I'll explain it a bit too. Is they also put, they talk about putting an amendment in there, or sub-amendment, to make sure that this bill can't be put on hold indefinitely. Puts a timeline on this review, so the Conservatives just can't kick the can down the road to delay this. Now that actually is the Conservatives' number one tactic to fight bills they don't like. Uh, they know that they don't have the courage or the gusto to actually fight anything, so they hope they can just kind of delay things and let the people fight them, that eventually the Liberals move on to something else or just get stuck in purgatory and then an election is called and then the Liberals forget about it and then like come back to it years later and then they can try to put it on hold for another election. This is the Conservatives' number one tactic because they don't like fighting for anything. Um, yeah, I mean, actually fighting. So it's kind of ironic that the NDP are calling out on this when their clear tactic with this delay is actually they're trying to somewhat delay this bill. And uh, they, they, they're looking for this window. They actually want to delay to when the outrage sort of peaks and fizzles around Bill C-10 to then put it back forward. So it's like the end, there's like a sub delaying tactic about the conservative delaying tactic to like, but they're using the delaying tactic too. It's, it's kind of convoluted and stupid, but that's Canadian politics. Um, well, it's more interesting when it's like this guy's suing me because they're connected to this organization or like here's a con here's a, a, a like a deep state takedown of a politician that would get frontline news in America but because it's a Canadian story no one cares about it but this is the more day-to-day -day Canadian boring politics and that's why you're here for boring political analysis all right now the final thing we need to talk about here is this isn't the last bill c10 like in the last interception censorship bill. This is not over. There are more bills like this. Uh, Greg Wycliffe does a great video on this. I'll link it in the description below. And tomorrow on TNT Live, Greg will join Wyatt and I, and we'll talk about internet censorship now and going forward and go all into it. So I'll link his video um, Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, that's when we'll uh, be doing uh, the live. I mean, you could find it on the TNT Live channel, the Facebook. Y you know, it's on my page. You'll, you can find it, um, but not now because it's in the future. Unless you have a time machine. Okay, moving on. The final thing to look for here is how will the conservatives play this? And this and this will be the big determining factor of the NDP because, you know, for however much the NDP we can make fun of for being stupid, a lot of them are savvy political actors. Or there are at least a few savvy political actors. 
And what will the conservatives do in response to this? Will they keep pushing or will they declare victory and try and fundraise off this? Now, I think the latter will happen. I hope the former happens. I also think you'll get more money if you do the former than just trying to fundraise now. And, and what I mean now is like now is the time to put the pressure on. Now is the time where you have a slight schism between the NDP and the Liberals, and you really need to exploit that. You need to absolutely continue to put the pressure on the NDP and link them to the Liberals, right? You need to show how, this is the time where you play their hand, say, you know, the NDP really want this. The NDP, this charter review is fake. The NDP hate freedom of speech. You know, what's the difference the NDP? Like try, but you gotta give the NDP an out, right? You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta push it as, you know, the NDP are sycophantic to Trudeau. That's how you push them. You push the button, right? And so let me give a military analogy. This is the time you actually send in the cavalry. The proper use of cavalry, you know, when they were cavalry was horses, not tanks, is you use the cavalry near the end of the battle, right? Or to, to finish off an enemy, right? The point is to break an army. And then once the army breaks, you know, and you have a cavalry sweep, that's when most of the casualties happen. Like that's when the big losses happen is when you turn your back and run and the cavalry sweeps through you and then you get cut down, whatever. You don't send the cavalry off at the beginning of the battle like they did in Game of Thrones, friggin' season eight, episode three, where you have the cavalry charge first, that makes absolutely no sense. And then they have the infantry, which is behind the artillery, which, and then the infantry is in front of the defenses. You use defenses to protect the infantry and then all of the artillery should be behind the walls to fight. It, bah! Like that's, a, that's why I feel like conservative politics, politics is like Game of, Thrones. Game of Thrones season eight is like Aaron O'Toole's conservative party. So this will tell you a lot. Will the conservatives send in the cavalry now? Will they continue to attack? Will they say, hey, this isn't over. The NDP is a delaying tactic. The NDP are just being Trudeau sycophants, but they're afraid, right? Now is the time where you push the division. You gotta make the NDP, put them in a point where they actually have to come out and fully back against this bill because they've taken a step back, right? This is They've turned their back and they started to retreat. When an army starts to retreat, that's when you send in the cavalry to push them all the way back, right? What if the conservatives decide to sort of grandstand and say, oh, look what we've done, we've stopped Bill uh, C-10, give us money, give us money, give us money, give us money. Um, then you know that they aren't really serious about stopping any of this. They're just doing their regular shenanigans. I mean, again, all p political parties are shenanigans based, but um, th this will be the final determinant. Like this will show you, are the conservatives serious on this issue? And if they're serious on this issue, they will push hard and try and exploit the schism between the liberals and the NDP. And if they're not serious on this issue, they will start to ask you for lots of money right now and pretend this is a much bigger victory than it actually is because this is not a victory. You know, this is a good development, but it's still a delaying tactic. They have not won this battle. It's a good turning point in the battle, right? But if they try and declare victory right now, you know that they're not serious. And if they attack hard right now, you'll know that they are. So I hope I'm wrong. I hope we, we see Aaron O'Toole in, you know, full-blown body armor just charging down a hill, you know, st storming into the Ottomans at the gates of Vienna. That'd be nice, but um, I'll believe when I see it, and I'll see you tomorrow.